Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to install Bitwarden on a private server that we currently have. In this case, I will be using a VPS. There are these recommended requirements. It's important to follow them. I have tried to install it on a three gig RAM instance of Ubuntu, but uh, the SQL server didn't even start. So it's best to follow at least four gigs of RAM. Over here in today's uh, demo, we're going to install it on a four core, eight gig RAM VPS server. This should be more than enough for the for the Bitwarder instance to run as smoothly as possible. As I mentioned, we will be installing it on a Docker uh, server. So we will be installing Docker as well onto our machine. Um, this will be done prior to actually following the Bitwarden steps. So over here, I have already visited the Docker website. We have um, all the all the installation methods required and all the steps. We're going to go ahead and follow the steps that are provided to us. So firstly, we're going to do the apt update and then we're going to install some prerequisites. The prerequisites are already installed in, in this case. We are using an Ubuntu 22 instance. We're going to also prepare ourselves for the GPG key and we're going to download it and load it into the keyring. Then we're also going to add the repository. Now we're just going to update the cache on our side in order to lo load up the new repositories that we have just added. Once that's done, we are just going to go ahead and install Docker along with the Docker Compose plugin. I'm going to hit yes and we're going to speed up the video here so it will take less time to install. Once the Docker installation is finished, we can go ahead and follow the Bitwarden installation steps. So we're going to add a user. We just need to key in a password for the user. And retype the password. There's no need to fill anything else. So I'm just going to hit enter and this will automatically bypass everything. For password, uh, there's no need to run the second command because we're, we don't need to set it because we've already done that. I'm just going to add the Bitwarden user into the Docker group so you can execute all the commands from the newly created user. For this demo, I will still be running them as root though. There is no need to create the Docker group because this will automatically be done when we install uh, the Docker server. We're going to change the permissions on the opt Bitwarden and we're going to change the owner of this particular folder as well. Now we're going to download Bitwarden. This is the shell script that I mentioned earlier, which we will be using in order to install Bitwarden. I'm just going to change directory into the uh, folder that was created earlier, and I'm just going to download the script into that folder. And then I'm just going to follow the install steps in order to have this set up accordingly. I have prepared the DNS record, uh, which will which will point to our instance. We will also be generating free SSL certificates by CertBot. We will need to provide an email address here so that we can get reminders when the certificate is going to expire. And that's done. Uh, 
we need to just name the instance of the database that is going to be used. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to name it vault as instructed. We'll just need to wait a little bit until this process is finished. Once your setup container has been downloaded onto your server, you will be asked for an installation ID and following that you will be asked for an installation key. You just need to access the URL that has been displayed on the console itself and in order to obtain these uh, key and ID, you need to insert an email address into the field and then hit submit. Once you hit submit, the key and ID will be shown on the web page. You just need to copy and paste them into the terminal in order to continue with the installation. I will be masking the installation ID and the installation key that were provided for my instance. It is important to keep in mind that whenever you're going to do some config changes, you need to run either the rebuild or the update command. This will recreate the, the containers. Once the update or rebuild command has finished, uh, you can go ahead and run the start command. This will bring up your Bitwarden instance. There are various plans that you can use for Bitwarden. There's the free version, which gives you basic functionality for Bitwarden. It allows you to store unlimited passwords and unlimited devices. You can uh, use all the core functionalities as well, and it's always free. You can also get the premium account, um, which costs $1 a month. This would give you additional functionalities and enable you certain features like 2FA, to certain providers you can still use the google authenticator but it gives you additional features it will also include security reports uh, to ensure that your password hasn't been leaked anywhere and the strength of the passwords that you have on bitwarden to ensure that you have a good standard across the board when it comes to bitwarden families this is three dollars 33 a month and you will have up to six users and you can share collections between each other. So if there are any passwords that you need to share with your family, you can go ahead and make use of that functionality as well. The installation seems to have been done. I'm just going to display all the containers that are running on our server. And this seems to be running perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the URL and this should bring up the Bitwarden instance. As you can see over here, we have the, the website working with a valid certificate. I'm just going to go ahead and create an account. For some reason, the create account doesn't let you go directly to create an account. So I'm just going to insert the email address into the text field and then just hit create account again. I'm going to insert all the details along with a secure password, which will protect my account. We need to re repeat the password and we can insert an optional hint, which I'm not going to set anything. You will also get a prompt that the account has been created. So we can go ahead and log in. I'm just going to insert the password that I have set up earlier. And here we are. Yeah. 
in order for you to send out the verification email, you will need to set up the SMTP server settings onto the config file, which Bitwarden uses. So this should be in the env folder. And as you can see here on screen, we have the SMTP details, which you can go ahead and replace with your own SMTP server settings in order to facilitate emails. So if you would like to change your password or set up anything else, you can go ahead and go onto this menu here. Uh, this will allow you to change the master password, or if you would like, to set up to FA, you can do it from here as well. As I mentioned earlier, to use certain multi-factor authentication like YubiKey or Duo, you will need to have the license. Else, what you can do is you can use a Google Authenticator app um, or like an OT app and you just provision the application that way. This doesn't require any additional licenses. So we're going to install the Firefox plugin in this case, since I'm using Firefox, you can install it um, uh, on any OS, so Windows, Mac and Linux, and it supports all the main web browsers. So I'm just going to obviously install the Firefox add-in. This would allow Bitwarden to integrate with Firefox. So this would make the experience of saving passwords and using passwords a lot easier. In order to do this, you need to go to the settings menu on the top left and we need to insert the server URL. Since we're not using the system provided by Bitwarden themselves on their own cloud, we will need to insert the URL here. I am going to use the email address that I have used to set up the account earlier and the password that I have set up earlier as well. Once you have successfully authenticated, you shall see something similar to what I have on my screen. Okay, so here I have noticed that the add-in is not showing up in the Firefox menu. So one second, let me have this enabled over here. And that's it. So it's pretty handy to see exactly what's going on. Now in order for you to add a login, uh, you can go ahead and select it. And these are the options that you get when adding a new account. You can add the name of the item, the username and the password. So now I'm just going to show you how to add a password to Bitwarden. So let's say, for example, you have a Gmail account. So in this case, I'm going to add it manually. So I'm just going to open the Bitwarden add-in. I'm just going to add the username and password and then save it. Once that's done, I'm going to sign out on Gmail and I'm going to try to log in again. But this time I'm going to have the number one next to the Bitwarden icon which will automatically insert the credentials as soon as I select the credential that I have on it. I'm going to set this up on another website. In this case, we're going to use GitHub and log on to that. For this website, I have never rejected the Bitwarden prompt. So I get a notification up top under the address bar, which would allow me to save the credentials directly on Bitwarden.
in order to view your password you can uh, go to the URL and just sign in and as you can see as soon as you go to the vault section you have all the passwords that were saved before I'd like to thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one